Hey everybody, this is Charlie Bathgate from the Third Wave here. Hope everybody is doing well this evening. I'm seeing some of you guys in the chat now. Good to see everybody. Seeing some familiar faces here. Liam, so everybody, if you could just, um, <clears throat> as we're waiting to get everybody in here and some more people trickle in, just kind of say, yeah, like Dave said, where you're from, introduce yourself, why are you here, what are you looking to learn about? Um, Par, we got Yvonne from Mexico. I probably mispronounced that. Ivan, Ivan, so, <laughs> sorry about that. Mahesh, a regular, obviously, great to see you. Um, my name is Charlie Bathgate. I have, uh, I'm taking Paul's place here. Usually he's the one who usually hosts these, but uh, we're mixing it up today. So I'm glad to have you guys in here with me. Um, I don't know where you all are in the world. It seems like mostly North, North America here. I am actually in Thailand right now. So it is 7.30 in the morning, my time. So if you see some light coming in from the from the side here, don't be disoriented. It's just because I'm on the other side of the world. Um, and if for any reason, any of you guys are in Southeast Asia or find yourself in Chiang Mai, Thailand in the next six months, definitely let me know. It would be great to meet up with some fellow psychonauts out here in Southeast Asia. Um, can everybody hear me and see me? Is that, someone just said there's a frozen image. I just wanna make sure I'm coming through okay. Everybody, if you could just let me know in the chat if you can see me and hear me. Um, okay, seems like everybody's okay. Good, good, good. Awesome. All right, we're just going to give it a couple more, couple more minutes here. A um, few hundred people in here right now, so that's fantastic to see. Looking forward to talking to you guys about the intersection of microdosing and macrodosing today. It's going to be a good, uh, you know. 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, Robert, saw you reconnected, it's all good, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, before before we get into the meat of today, into the webinar, I'll give you guys a quick background about myself. Uh, I've been working here with, uh, with the Third Wave for over a year now. Um, I met Paul in, uh, in January of last year, and, um, you know, we started, we immediately connected in terms of the mission of what he wanted to build here, the third wave, and and uh, you know, so our our entrepreneurial experiences and how that they could kind of combine together to, you know, to work together. So um, my background has always been in entrepreneurship, um, and my main focus has always been around sort of educational design and building community. Um, and I've worked in a coaching capacity, in a mentorship capacity, a lot, primarily with creatives. So actually in Los Angeles with. Um, uh, screenwriters, um, directors, producers, that sort of thing. Um, also traders in the stock market, options and, and equities traders um, in the big bad world of finance and, uh, and entrepreneurs, a lot of entrepreneurs. So I've had that sort of diversity of experience. All three of those um, occupations are very mentally tough. They can be uh, very mentally strenuous. So um, you know, that's, that's, I've always been deeply interested in, in psychology and that's, that's part of what drew me to working with those people in those capacities. Um, and I've been drawn to psychedelics for, you know, over the last 10 years of my life. I'm, I'm 31 and, um, you know, I've had long bouts of depression and anxiety myself and, uh, also been diagnosed ADD as a kid, whether you believe in that diagnosis or not, whole different type of conversation. But, um, you know, I think a lot of people in the, in the room have, can probably relate to that. And um, mental illness runs in my family uh, pretty pretty deeply. So mental illness and and um, not just that, but also self optimization from a, from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Living and working in intense startup environments, you know, also as an athlete, you know, I was constantly looking for ways to help myself be more present, tap into my natural strengths, maintain my energy levels, you know, all without kind of burning myself out. And um, psychedelics. Once they kind of plopped on my radar about 10 years ago, had a, started having a huge impact on my ability to, to not only kind of keep myself healthy, healthy and work through, you know, sources of resistance in my life, things that were holding me back. Um, you know, they've given me perspective on myself and, and really kind of forcing me to look at things that maybe I otherwise wouldn't have looked at. Um, but they've also helped me to engage with my life, my work, uh, my relationships with a greater sense of, of creativity, um, joy, empathy, 
Um, so they've been both a, a challenging presence for me, but also one that has facilitated, you know, deep amounts of, of growth and joy. And, um, you know, that's what I hope, um, hope everyone here can say the same thing and hopefully we can facilitate some of that, um, here, you know, through this webinar. So, um, it should go without saying, but I am, I'm not a therapist or a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. Um, I'm not a researcher. So, you know, my job here is to communicate some of the best practices that we've learned through our, our team's collective experiences, through Paul's work, through all the conversations we've had with everybody in the third wave community, um, which is at this point, hundreds of conversations. It's been, you know, really, really kind of incredible to crowdsource a lot of the information that we've, we've provided. Um, and to give you guys, you know, some of the best practices and, and put some things on your radar. Um, but especially if you're in any sort of situation where you are, um, you know, you have a, a, a pretty serious diagnosis, anything in the range of schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, um, psychosis, um, you know, or if you're completely new to psychedelics, you should really make sure that you're trying to do this with, um, you know, some, some measure of professional supervision. Uh, psychedelics can be destabilizing by nature um, and they can be extremely challenging substances to work with, especially if you are not doing them in the right context. And that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today. Um, but I would just, I want to make sure that, that nobody in this webinar um, and nobody that comes a third way of things that, um, you know, were that there's any sort of promise of, of these being a panacea. Um, you know, the, you still have to do the work. And if you don't use these substances properly, uh, you know, they can have serious adverse effects. So, you know, enough with the note of caution, but please hear the note of caution. <laughs> um, so let's see, let's make sure that we've got, um, let's see, we got some more people coming in. Um, were we discussing bad trips? Maybe a little bit. Um, Antica, maybe a, a little bit. We'll get to the, we'll get to that in the, um, in the Q and A if you want to. And guys, when you have questions, um, throughout the webinar, feel free to just drop them into the, into the chat and, uh, Paul will be in there, you know, moderating in, in just a second here, but then we'll also be, um, we'll be doing Q and A towards the end of the webinar. So, um, feel free to just drop questions in there and then I will, uh, I'll go through at the end and, and we can, you know, we can talk about all this. So, um, let me see here, make sure that we've got a couple more, a couple more, <laughs> the hashtag little intersection of microdosing and microdosing this weekend. Um, it's really fun to see a lot of the people that we've met and know from the community in here. So this is, it's really cool to see everybody, see everybody. Um, awesome. All right. So great. I think we've got, um, I think we've got a pretty good group here. So let's let's get started. Let's dive into the intersection of microdosing and macrodosing today's topic. So um, let's start out with just a definition of a microdose and a macrodose, right? Um, real quick, a, a macrodose is what you would typically consider a trip. So, you know, visual distortions, alteration of your visual perception, um, you know, loss of your typical sense of time and, and, and space. Um, becoming acutely aware of, um, you know, elements of your environment, especially, you know, nature. Um, as Stanislav Grof said, uh, you know, complex insight into the nature of existence and into yourself. So, um, you know, that is usually in the range of 100 micrograms of LSD and two grams of psilocybin mushrooms. That's usually, um, you know, what we're talking about here. The, um, I think Paul may have just come in. As a presenter, so I don't know. Can you guys see? <laughs> can you Paul's... see that? Because I might be doing this. Can you hear me, Charlie? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, cool. Okay. okay. You want to stay on live audio here? Okay. There we go. Oh, there he goes. All right. <laughs> He's in New York. I'm in Thailand, guys. We got a we got a little coordination here. So um, yeah, Paul will be in the chat moderating, but but I'll do uh, I'll do the, the speaking here for now. Um, so yeah, a macrodose. We're talking about um, you know typically 100 micrograms of LSD, two grams of psilocybin mushrooms. That's that's usual. Everybody's based on your you know your physiology, your sensitivity, potentially medications that you're taking, uh, which could blunt or potentiate the effects of the psychedelic. Um, your tolerance and and your you know what a macrodose would be for you could change. 
but typically we're looking at 100 micrograms of LSD, two grams of psilocybin mushrooms. That's that's usually what people talk about in the context of a macro dose. Uh, a micro dose is usually one tenth of that of a macro dose. So usually in the range of 10 to 20 micrograms of LSD um, and 0.1, 0.2 grams of psilocybin. And what you're going to experience on a micro dose is much more subtle effects that can be equally um, as profound as what you would experience in a macro dose um, if, as they're accumulated over time. But in the short term, the day that you experience the, the you know, you ingest the microdose, um, typically you're talking about sub perceptual effects. So that means uh, no visual distortions whatsoever. Everybody has a different way of approaching their microdosing. Some people like to feel it a little bit more, um, and some people don't want to have any sort of um, you know, noticeable effect. So what people are typically targeting with microdose is a slight, you know, uplift in mood, greater degree of self awareness, and, and capacity for self-reflection, you know, greater access to flow states. That's that sense of being in the zone, of being able to um, kind of lose your sense of yourself as you typically pour yourself into work, creative work. You just feel like everything is coming quite easily to you. Um, you know, this is one of the sort of peak states that, um, you know, that humans can really experience and achieve. And so microdosing is, is you know, acts, greater access to flow states is one of the reasons why so many people are drawn to microdosing. Um, typically, we see, we've seen this a lot from people who take the course, the microdosing course that we offer and people in the community, a decrease in addictive tendencies. So people just find themselves, it's easier to quit cigarettes. It's easier to, uh, you know, cut down on their alcohol intake. You just naturally find yourself more inclined to take better care of yourself. Um, and then you have an increase in sense of connection and empathy often with, uh, that could be with yourself, maybe the most important relationship, um, with your coworkers, with, uh, you know, your, your family, your, your friends, your significant other, um, you just, it's, it's fine. You find yourself a little bit more capable of putting yourself in the shoes of the other person, um, a little bit greater sense of patience. So, you know, those are also, those are some of the. The benefits, you know, the things that we target um, with with microdosing, it's not always going to going to result in that. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about here is how to how to try and maximize the chances that you know that you get to have those experiences. Um, so let's talk about one of the, the main questions that we get, um, and it's you know what are the commonalities and how you prepare for a macrodose uh, versus a microdose day, right? Um, people talk a lot about preparation for for macrodosing and a lot of our preparation for microdosing. Uh, we have tons of information on our on the third wave about both. Uh, but what are some of like the areas of overlap uh, that are that are important? And um, I think the first part, I, I think everybody here has has heard about set and setting. That's you know, this is like the the, you know, the Bible, the the very basic steps of how to responsibly take psychedelics. You know, your set is short for your mindset. What where is your headspace when you're coming into to the psychedelic experience? Where is your mind at? Um, making sure that as much as possible, you're in a in a place where you can accept whatever comes up for you in the, in the psychedelic experience. Um, you know that you're not really anxious. Certainly that you're not suffering from you know any sort of acute uh, you know mental illness or, or breakdown, um, especially if you're doing it without any sort of, sort of supervision. Um, you know, that's, it's your mindset, right? How, what, where's your head at when you're going through this experience and then setting your physical surroundings, right? Um, you know, are you sitting in traffic in Los Angeles? I really, really hope not. Um, or are you, you know, in the privacy of, you know, your own home, um, or are you in a, you know, working with a, with a therapist in their office? Like, you know, what's, what's your physical environment like? Um, and I think one of the most important areas of overlap between preparation for the macrodose and the microdose has to do with intentions. Um, and personally for me, I will say that coming into my microdosing experiences, I've had plenty of macrodose experiences, but when I first started microdosing, I was kind of dismissive of the idea of intentions because um, I just sort of chalked everything up to like the physiology of things. And I was like, this is just about the neurological mechanisms of what's happening with when the psychedelic hits my brain, you know, intentions are sort of woo woo. This is not, this is not going to have that big of an effect on me. Um, and I was wrong. I was definitely wrong to, to, to be dismissive of it. Um, intentions both for a macrodose experience and for a microdose experience are maybe the most influential thing that you can, the inf most influential tool that you can use to really try and, 
and maximize the chances that you're going to have to be able to achieve the goals that you want to achieve in, in your experience. Um, so, you know, one of the things that you can do in terms of, I mean, well, first let's start about what is an intention? Um, you know, you are, you're coming in, your intention is the, the headspace that you hope to inhabit when you enter this experience. So, um, and, and your goals for what you want the, the experience to provide you. And it's a very different to different, it's important to differentiate between an intention and an expectation, right? Setting an intention, let's say I want to be, um, you know, I just want to be more present and I want to be more patient, compassionate towards myself, right? That's, that's a very basic goal. That's something we hear a lot from people in the course. That's not something that, um, and that could be true for a macro dose experience or a micro dose experience, right? Um, that doesn't mean just because I set that intention and I come in with that, um, that headspace and I sort of let myself sit in that before I ingest the substance and maybe write it down and journal about it before going into the experience. Um, that's not a guarantee. That is not um, something that you're not, like psychedelics are, they're unpredictable. They could take you in any different direction. So just because you set an intention doesn't mean that you're going to um, have that exact experience. So it's important to differentiate between intention and expectation. Um, letting go of expectations is a pretty big part of the psychedelic experience. And that's why we advise anybody, especially when you're new to, to psychedelics, um, part of your intention, sort of the foundation of it, should be based around acceptance. Acceptance of whatever comes up. Acceptance of the fact that you might be presented with information, your mind be present, may present you with wisdom, with insight, that in the moment, you might not be able to, to, to understand and to reconcile with the fact that it actually really is speaking to you about what you want to learn about. Um, and, and upon further reflection and upon, you know, going through your, your integration process, you might look back on that, you know, experience um, and that insight that you had and just say, wow, this was, you know, the substance was actually sort of teaching me and revealing a lot to me about what I wanted to learn about. I just couldn't kind of understand that at the time. Um, and also when it comes to challenging experiences, someone in the, in the, you know, chat earlier brought up, um, you know, bad trips as they say. And, um, you know, we like, we more often refer to them as challenging experiences. Um, but setting your intention to be as part of your intention to be accepting whatever comes up can really help you if challenging thoughts start to come up. Um, because what you don't want to be is you don't want to be in a position where you're fighting, um, the psychedelic. And that is true for microdosing as much as it is for macrodosing. Um, thoughts are going to, your, your brain is going to kind of decompartmentalize and things that you may have, you know, kind of pushed away from your conscious awareness are going to come up to the surface. That's, that's one of the reasons why these substances help us move through sources of resistance so effectively. Um, but you have to be accepting of that. You have to be willing to go along with that. And um, by sort of setting your intention to do that, you can, along with maybe additional goals that you might want, uh, you know, to achieve, you can really increase the odds that you're going to have a good uh, experience. So um, there's, a, there's a lot of things you can do in terms of preparation for, um, you know, for both a microdose and a macrodose. And I'm going to go into a little bit more of them here. But I will say that, you know, in terms of what we're seeing a lot of, of uh, conclusions coming out of uh, the, the research that's going on um, through our own personal experiences, through um, the experience of people in, the, in our community, setting intention. If you're going to walk away from one thing in this, in this conversation, that is huge. Um, and that is definitely not something to, uh, to be ignored. Um, and one thing you can do also in terms of setting your intention is, and this is especially effective in a macro dose, but also for, for micro dosing is use a physical object, um, and, and attach some meaning to that. Use it as a reminder of what your intention is. Maybe that's a picture of, you know, your, your kids, your family on your, on your desk. Um, Maybe it's, um, you know, uh, a statue that you got when, you know, a, a you know, statue of the Buddha when you got, when you were traveling in Thailand. Of course, I'm coming up with a Thailand reference because I'm sitting in Thailand, but, um, you know, whatever it is, a, a physical reminder of your intention can be really, really effective way to kind of draw your attention continuously back to, you know, to what your initial attention was for, um, you know, for your experience. So, um, yeah, the next part is, this is more pragmatic, but it's just accurate measurement of your dose. You need to know not only um, how much you're taking, um, so that means if you're taking psilocybin mushrooms, making sure you have an accurate scale, you know, weighing it out, 
Um, with LSD, we, we certainly recommend volumetric dosing. That goes also with a lot of research chemicals out there. You know, don't take, don't cut off pieces of a tab. You don't know whether or not the LSD is distributed evenly across a tab. So that can be, um, you know, that can be borderline dangerous, but, you know, also not the best way to, to, to ensure that you're going to be accurate in terms of your dose. Um, so you need to know how much you're taking, right? Um, and we have a lot of information about this on, on the website and, and certainly in our microdosing course too, if you want to kind of dive deeper into that. But you also need to test your substance. You need to know what you're taking, um, especially for people, if, if you're out there and you're buying any of this stuff, you know, off the dark web or, you know, any sort of online source, or you're, you're accessing this through someone that you don't know, you don't trust, you, you don't, um, I mean, I wouldn't buy it from anybody that you don't trust, but if you don't have familiarity with the substance already, uh, test it. And Test Kits Plus is a great resource for, for, for testing kits. There's other ones out there, but, uh, you know, better safe than sorry. Just test it. Know what you're taking. Um, another aspect that another you know, kind of area of overlap in terms of preparation is that um, psychedelics are going to increase a, a have been shown to increase a personality trait called openness, right? Um, openness to new experiences. And when you um, combine that with, especially with microdosing, with your potential to tap into to flow states more readily, they can lead you to, um, you know, think that making big decisions in the moment is the right move. And making sure that you have a process in place not to do that is uh, is important, and that's a good part of your your preparation. And I think that this is something that people probably um, are ready for in a macro dose. Like most people probably know that if you take you know two point five grams of psilocybin, and then you have an instinct you know five hours later to call your boss and tell them how you feel about them, it's probably not the best idea. Um, it's probably better to like write those thoughts down and then give it a solid 24, 48 hours. Um, I've heard some people say, you know, you should never make, take, make major decisions within two weeks of having a macro dose experience, um, but give it at least 24 to 40 hours before you make any kind of big decisions. Um, there's that aspect to it. But then there's also with microdosing, um, and Paul and I have both experienced this, it can make you, um, it can just increase that sort of, it can put you almost into a manic state is, is, is what I would say. Um, and in which case you're, you tend to be, you know, it's, it's very easy to toggle back and forth between different topics and, and kind of dive deep into things you feel. And in some ways you are more effective. Um, and, 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 you know, it's easier for you to, to, to kind of take on, um, you know, topics of conversation. And, and so what that can lead to, um, and especially when you're tapping into that flow state, you know, over and over is a little bit of impulsivity and, it's always a good idea to have sort of rules written down for yourself. So if you're going to microdose, um, you know, have just a, a, a structure in place for yourself so that you don't make major decisions within 24, you know, that day. Sleep on it. Like, why not sleep on it? Um, you know, if you have a new business, um, you know, arrangement, a new, a new business opportunity that someone's, you know, offering to you and it's, you know, a new partnership, um, something major like that, like, don't. You know, there's no reason to agree to it that day. Like, give it some time. Give it, you know, 24 hours. Create a little bit of separation so that you know that it's not, um, you know, the the psychedelic that, that's that's helping to induce that decision. Um, you know that you have the confidence to, that you know you did it in sort of a, um, you know, in both that, that you agreed with the decision you were making, both with the psychedelic in your system and with a not in your system. And then, um, you know, this is something that is probably not as relevant for people who are much more experienced with psychedelics. Um, but especially if you're new to microdosing, it's also important to have something that you can call. Um, somebody who has some experience with, with psychedelics, somebody who, who knows you, who you trust, who, can, um, who you can talk to. And when you're first trying out microdosing, just be able to tell them, you know, hey, I might give you a call in, you know, in the next eight to, to 12 hours. And, you know, it'd be great if you could kind of have your phone available um, in case anything comes up for you, in case, you know, you, you start to have a little bit of a challenging experience. It's, it's really not likely with a micro dose. You're, you're talking about very, very low doses and very subtle effects, but um, it's better safe than sorry. You know, you might as well do that. Um, and then, uh, you know, lastly, especially when you're in the beginning of micro dosing, um, and this is absolutely true for a macro dose, you know, don't put yourself into a straight a state of transition. So don't make it so that you have to 
uh, you know, get in your car and go to work um, or that you have to, um, you know, go shop, go, you know, grocery shopping or pick up the kids or anything like that. Like in the, in the beginning of your microdosing protocol, and certainly if you're macrodosing, make sure that you can just be in the same place for the duration of, of the experience. With psilocybin mushrooms, that's typically about six to eight hours. With LSD, that can be more in the range of eight to 12. Um, you know, don't just make sure that you can be in one place and you're not going to be sort of moving around a lot. Um, so those are a lot of the, the, the similarities. Um, and again, if you guys have questions, just please drop them in the chat. Um, you know, Paul will be, uh, will be answering some of those and then we'll go through them in the Q and A as well. Um, so what about some of the differences, right? You compare for a macrodose and a microdose. Um, you know, one of the things that once you get a little bit more experience with microdosing, one of the ways that, that you can kind of differentiate them is setting. Um, I'll give the example of the New York City subway. I would never, I'm not experienced, I've, I've heard, actually hold, heard Hamilton Morris talking about this, who's probably one of the most experienced psychedelic users out there. And also, you know, I mean, the guy, the guy has enough experience to be able to do what, what he wants. He's earned that, right? Um, but I have nowhere near enough um, comfort with, with psychedelics to take a macro dose and then go sit on the New York City subway. That is a potentially dangerous situation for me. Um, but for a micro dose, especially once I got my micro dosing protocol down um, and, and I really understood how various dose levels would affect me, putting myself in different settings um, was actually a really good way to learn about myself and learn about how um, I related to my environment. Um, this can be especially true for people in a professional context. Um, when you go to work, um, and I'm not, you know, this is, this is really speaking from my experience. I'm not encouraging anybody to take a bunch of psychedelics and go to work. Um, and again, this is, we're talking about microdosing in this context, not, um, you know, not taking two grams of, of mushrooms and going to, going to your job. Um, but especially when you're, when you're kind of working through some of what you want to try and understand about you and your relationship to your job, um, you know, microdosing can be a really good, a really effective way to kind of increase your, your level of self-awareness, to really increase your, um, you know, the effectiveness of your scanner of, you know, what's going on in your environment. What's the dynamic between you and, and, your, and your coworker? Um, obviously, as I talked about, being able to tap into flow states to, to, to a greater degree is, is something that, you know, you'll notice about, okay, when I fell into that flow state, what was going on? How, you know, did I, was it because... I, uh, you know, made sure that I had my email turned off and, and, you know, had set aside two hours and I canceled that meeting so that I could have you know, two, two and a half hours of uninterrupted, you know, focus. Um, you start to have a greater degree of awareness around, you know, what's working for you, what isn't, and also deeper understanding of how things you might want to change, how you're relating to your job. Is it fulfilling for you? Um, you know, I think that there's, there's, a little bit of a backlash, not a little bit. There's there's a backlash against in, in some aspects of the psychedelic community about microdosing and whether or not it's just sort of used as a tool, being used as a tool for you know sort of Silicon Valley entrepreneur types who are just trying to kind of make themselves better at um, you know jobs that, that really are not helping anybody. They're sort of fueling the capitalistic system, um, and you know everybody's entitled to their opinion, and, and there there could be some truth to that. Um, but I also think that, especially in comparison to a drug like an Adderall, um, you know, ADD medications, your, your typical performance enhancers, something like a modafinil or something like that, um, psychedelics are going to increase the odds that you're going to have self-reflection. You're going to consider yourself in a greater context in your relationship to, to other people and, and, your, and in the world. Um, and I think, you know, I've certainly had experiences like this and, and I've, had a lot of conversations with people in my coaching work with people in the third wave and then just in the community. Um, they find that they started taking, you know, LSD to kind of increase their productivity, but then they realized, Hey, like I'm not as fulfilled in my job as, as I thought I was. And there's huge opportunities for me to either change something in, you know, my job and how I work or to potentially change my job entirely. Um, and so I, I think that that's one of the things that's so exciting about these, these, um, substances, if they're used appropriately, is yes, they can be sort of a performance answer and they can help you do, do better work. Um, but I think they will also increase the odds that you're going to be doing the kind of work that can not only be of greater and deeper benefit to yourself and greater alignment with yourself and your priorities, but also um, 
work that will be of benefit to people beyond yourself, let's say. So, um, yeah. And then another aspect that is, is different in terms of, um, of how you would use and, and, and prepare and, and, and especially integrate a macrodose experience and a microdose experience is, um, is integration, right? So integration is a big word right now in, in the psychedelic community. And it's really about, you know, how do you, how do you reconcile the experiences that you've had, the insights that you've had um, in your psycho experience, how you combine those into, you know, carry those on and integrate them into your life outside of, of that experience. And, you know, often what you see from macro doses, you, know, you go in, you take, um, you have some preparatory work, um, and then, um, you know, you have the day where you take your, your micro dose, you have your, or sorry, macro dose, you have your session. And then in the subsequent days, weeks, you know, you're working with somebody, um, you know, working through a process of really sort of analyzing what, you know, what happened, what are the insights that, that, that you experienced, um, you know, and kind of digging through those and, and applying those to maybe a therapeutic framework that you're currently working within. Um, or, you know, if it's from a professional standpoint that you have professional goals for, for, for your macro dose creative, um, you know, sort of creative expansion, which is actually something I'm going to talk about in, in, in a bit here, um, you know, working continuously on how to, to integrate those those insights. Um, and I'm going to talk about integration here and how microdosing and macrodosing can be used in combination with one another um, in a second. But one of the things that is uh, different for microdosing and macrodosing is that with microdosing, you're doing it over a continuous period of time, right? Over a much longer period of time. Macrodose is, you know, select to, uh, you know, Saturday, a couple hours, uh, you know, it's, it's that day. It's a confined period of, of space and time. Um, whereas with microdosing, it's, you know, over the course of, let's say five weeks, you know, for a lot of people when they first start out. So it's more of a daily process. It's a daily ritual. Um, you're not doing it every day. You're doing it. Um, you know, if you're following the sort of Jim Fadiman protocol, which is the kind of the basic starter, um, approach, you're doing one day on two days off one day on. So if you microdose on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, you would take off Thursday, you would microdose again. Um, but the process of tracking your experience, of tracking your results, of, of integration, of reflecting upon, you know, what's changing for you um, and, and how like these sort of subtle pieces, these smaller pieces are kind of the tectonic plates are shifting a little bit um, is a little bit more in depth because it's happening over such a, a longer period of time. Um, and that's why we always talk about uh, a couple of things. Journaling is an extremely effective practice. Um, and this is another thing that I was a little bit dismissive of when I first started out. Um, but journaling is a way to um, just constantly sort of inhabit the and, and honor the work that you're doing from, you know, with psychedelic and to not only continuously reflect upon what's what's changing for you um, and how you're feeling to it, how you're feeling with it, how you're relating to it. But also it's really, really powerful when you do that over a long period of time. I've talked to a number of people in my in my coaching uh, sessions. And they've said that after I suggested them to, to do that, they've, they've gotten back to me and they've said, this one, this was so powerful because I didn't realize how much was changing for me. Um, and I started my journaling process, you know, right when I started my microdosing protocol and five weeks later, yes, I knew I had changed a little bit and made some progress, but looking back on what I was writing about on day one compared to what I'm writing about now has been a really powerful experience for me because I just didn't realize the degree of the impact that, that this that, that this protocol was having on me and how much I've evolved my thinking about certain things. So it can be just a big confidence booster um, and a big a big help for you to see to kind of track your trajectory of, of where things you know how you've changed. Um, give me a second. I'm going to pull up um, some things on the screen here. This is, these are just two um, resources that we have that we provide to people in the microdosing course. Um, you know, one of them is a uh, the what we call the results tracking template, um, and this is you know it's nothing too crazy. You guys could you can you know customize one, create customize one yourself, but you know it is a, it's a spreadsheet that you can use on a, on a daily basis um, to track your results, and you know it kind of keeps you honest in a way of you know asking you to set your intentions, um, you know tracking when you're adjusting the dose and everything like that. And then this is especially for, for the kind of biohackers out there, uh, self-optimization types, um, you know, looking at, um, you know, how much you're taking the dose amount and everything like that. 
but all the way into um, you can start tracking things like um, you know blood pressure, heart rate variability, which is a, a measure of your nervous system health. Um, you know you can get into the sort of food that you eat um, and, and and you know aspects of your diet. Even if like if you're trying to quit cigarettes, how many cigarettes did I have today? Um, and you can really kind of see also if you're taking other supplements and medications, which is something that we you know can be very risky. We definitely um, you know, that that's more for sort of advanced microdosers. We don't suggest just, you know, throwing in a bunch of supplements in addition to your microdosing protocol. But as you start feeling more comfortable with things um, and you learn more about potentially the synergistic effects between microdosing and let's say a supplement like lion's mane, um, you know, mushroom tea, you can kind of start looking at how are these things affecting my experience? How, how are these changing my, my day to day? And how can I, you know, get more about what out of what I'm doing? Um, so there's that part to it. And then we also, um, let me pull up the other thing here. Sorry guys. Um, our microdosing workbook, right? And this is more for the qualitative side of things. Um, you know, more from a journaling perspective, but, uh, it's 127 pages. It's quite in depth and it's really a way for you guys to, you know, not only, um, get like, a, take a good inventory before you start of, you know, this is where I'm at. This is, this is where I want to go. Uh, but also on a daily basis to track what has your experience been, um, you know, really kind of giving you prompts to to dig into um, the journaling experience. So if journaling doesn't come naturally to you, that sort of um, structure is something that, um, and, and that sort of framework, whether you're getting into the microdosing experience, or sorry, the microdosing course, or whether you're um, you know, making it up on your own, Either one works. Those those can be very effective tools from from an integration perspective, um, especially with microdosing because it's happening over such a long period of time. Um, here's a question that we get asked all the time: If you're on a microdosing protocol and you decide to macrodose, how much time off from your protocol do you need? Um, you know, before you do a macrodose. So let's give the example. I'm you know I'm in the midst of a microdosing protocol. I'm taking um, you know uh, ten micrograms of LSD. You know, every every uh, once every three days. So one day on, two days off, one day on. And I've been doing that for a couple of weeks, and then I say, you know, for whatever reason, I want to have a macrodose experience. I want to, um, you know, go go do that. Um, what we typically suggest, and there's no, again, there's no research on this. People have. We are not yet at the point where you know where where researchers are looking at the calibration between. A macro, the timing of a macrodose and a microdose. This is really from our own personal experiences and from the sort of collective knowledge that we've we've uh, taken from people in the, in our community um, and a lot of people who are extremely well versed in psychedelics that, that we talk about that we talk to all the time. Um, you should give yourself the, the the safe and easy rule of thumb is to, is to put a week on the end of each um, of each end from, of, of the macrodose. So. If you um, are going to take a, your macrodose on, you know, Saturday, stop your mic microdosing protocol at least the Saturday before, and don't take another microdose until at least the Saturday afterwards. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. One is just avoiding tolerance buildup, right? Um, one of the reasons you follow a protocol, one of the reasons you take days off, is because um, psychedelics you, you can build up a tolerance quite quickly to them. That also means that they, the tolerance washes out quite quickly as well. But you certainly don't want to go into a macrodose experience and not have the full, um, you know, not have the psychedelics have their full effects just because you were doing a microdosing protocol. You had microdose, let's say, the day before or something like that. So you want to make sure that your tolerance is, is completely, you know, washed out. Um, but you also want to give your time, your mind time um, in the lead up to settle, right? Um, and that has to do with, with, with mindset. You don't want to, my microdosing, as subtle as it is, can um, be destabilizing. It can continue to bring up some, some challenging material. And um, you want to give your mind a chance to kind of settle and ground yourself um, before you go into a macrodose experience, just to give yourself a higher likelihood, a higher chance of being able to kind of immerse yourself in that, in that macrodose. Um, and then afterwards, you know, I think that there are some people who, most people after you take a psychedelic, they don't immediately want to go do it again. That's one of the reasons that these substances are not addictive. Michael Pollan talks about this a lot in his new book, um, How to Change Your Mind. You know, it's it, most people, if you wake up the next day, um, you know, you macrodose on a Saturday, on a Sunday, you don't wake up and be like, I want to do that immediately again. 
it's it's a lot. It's a lot that you kind of put yourself through. Your mind has had to process a lot. So microdosing, you know, you want to give yourself some time. And and microdosing um, immediately after, you know, starting restarting your protocol immediately after the macrodose, not only will increase the odds that you develop tolerance, which is something obviously that, that, that you don't want to do, but it can also just kind of destabilize, like continue a destabilization that you don't want to do. You want to give yourself time to process and integrate the macros experience properly before you dive back into a microdosing protocol. Um, however, having said all that, um, one of the things that can be very effective in terms of how to use a microdose and a macrodose together is using your microdose as a way to, um, as, as an integration tool. And one of the things you know, I just referenced uh, Michael Pollan's book, and he, he has a really interesting interview in, um, in, in the book where he interviews Mendel Kalin, who's a researcher at uh, Imperial College London. And um, Kalin gives a great metaphor in that interview. And he's talking about neuroplasticity. He's talking about the effects that psychedelics have on our brains. And essentially, you know, the metaphor goes like this. If you think about your brain um, as like a snowy hill and your thoughts are like a slide, you know, over time, or sorry, like a sled, um, over time, as one sled after another goes down the hill, it starts to create grooves, right? And then each subsequent sled will be sort of drawn into those grooves like a magnet, right? Um, and this is how our brains start to have ingrained thought patterns, right? And we start to just, you know, whether it's rumination or just sort of only being able to see things from a certain perspective, that's literally because the neural pathways have been trafficked so heavily that, um, that is where our thoughts naturally go from a, from a neurological standpoint. Um, and continuing this metaphor, psychedelics are a way to sort of temporarily flatten the snow. So they make you know these deeply worn trails disappear, which means that your new sleds can kind of go in any direction that they want. Um, you know, it's it's kind of uh, it's an open opportunity for them to to lay down new pathways. And one of the most powerful ways to kind of continue or just to integrate a macrodose experience independent of microdosing is to mentally revisit the insights and the experience that you had from a macrodose in, in, in your macrodose. So what that could look like for you is a daily practice. I hesitate to call it meditation because meditation is a complicated, a lot of people have a complicated relationship with meditation. Um, so it's more of like a contemplation uh, or a mental revisitation of, of what you experienced in with the macrodose. So that means Let's say I macro those on a Saturday and I go through and I have, you know, uh, a lot of insights and, and, you know, different perspectives introduced to me. And there's kind of a lot for me to, to process, but there's a lot that I want to take out of that and literally integrate into how I'm looking at the world myself and my behaviors. Um, the micro the the, the the sort of contemplation exercise would be every morning for the, for the, for the next couple, I would say for the next couple weeks, like two weeks, every morning, if you can do it every evening, setting aside 10 to 15 minutes to just sit down, close your eyes, be in a quiet space and mentally return to those insights, to that perspective, to the experience, right? And literally you're just sort of sending sleds, mental sleds back down those pathways, those trails that were laid down in your macrodose experience with the goal of trying to ingrain them, trying to take advantage of this neuroplasticity and to really ingrain them deeper into your, into your brain, your thought processes. Um, so you should do that independent of microdosing, right? Uh, as part of an integration tool for, for, for macrodosing. But microdosing can be a very effective way to kind of continue to build, facilitate that and to take advantage of the neuroplasticity and the effects that these psychedelics have on our brain chemistry. So what that could mean is that after you've kind of given yourself a week after your macrodose to, you know, take off, continue to not microdose and, and kind of let yourself process things, you know, starting, let's say, the Saturday after the, the Saturday after my macrodose experience, you can start integrating into your microdosing protocol and into your, into your habits when you're microdosing that sort of mental revisitation process. Um, and the microdose can facilitate an easier time of recalling, you know, what the macrodose showed you and, and what it brought to your attention. Um, and it can, it can facilitate that, that neuroplasticity to continue sort of laying down those new pathways. So, you know, if I were to wake up on that Saturday, a week after my macrodose at 6.30 a.m., uh, because I'm just that on top of my game, and I'm waking up at 6.30 a.m. on Saturday, um, and I immediately take my, my microdose, 
would wait for, let's say, an hour, right? By then, it usually would have sort of kicked in. It would have been um, absorbed into my system. Um, and then go do my sort of contemplation, my mental rehabilitation process. And I've personally experienced this, and I've talked to, to a number of people who have as well, that it can really facilitate um, this sort of ingraining, this sort of integration, this, this mental revisitation of what, what did I, what were the insights that I gleaned from, from that macro dose? What, what sort of increased, um, you know, degree of self-awareness, like what, what is it that I want to take from that and bring into my life? Um, and this process of, of using microdosing to kind of facilitate the integration process can be, can be really, really effective. So, um, especially if you're more experienced, uh, you, could, you could give it a try. Um, it's, it can be a very effective tool. Um, okay, here. So we're getting we're getting close to you know I don't want to go for too long. Um, but one of the things that we also said that we would go through is um, some of the topics circumstances in which a macrodose might be more effective than a microdosing protocol. And that can't go too in depth into this because because we're going to run out of time. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll touch on them. And certainly, if you guys have any more questions on anything that we've talked about, please feel free to email contact at thirdwave.com or or sorry, the thirdwave.co, contact at the thirdwave.co. No, Paul, just like cringe there for a second. Um, and uh, we're very responsive to questions. So yeah, please, please send us your, you know, your emails, just anything else that, um, that comes up as a result of this. But um, one of the things that you should really be aware of is, um, is trauma. Um, and a macro dose, this is one of the circumstances in which a macro dose might be better than a micro dose. Uh, with a macrodose, you can control your set and setting much better because it's a smaller period of time. You can ideally arrange for a sitter, you know, a professional to be there, someone who can really hold space for you. Um, with a macrodose, you can kind of confront what comes up for you in that setting and then take time to process and integrate that experience. Um, you know, you will lose control almost by definition. You're taking a psychedelic. So you want to create a safe environment around that sort of loss, and loss of control. And you, it's e much easier to do that in a macrodose setting. Um, for people that microdose and they have trauma, um, and this can be true for generalized anxiety too, um, it can continually bring up the source of trauma and anxiety in a way that will expose you to it on a more long-term basis um, and sort of making it harder to process. So that heightened emotionality that the microdosing can create make, can make it a lot harder for you to, uh, can impede your daily functioning. So, you know, you're, you're sitting there at work and all of a sudden, um, you know, you start thinking about a source of trauma, um, something that happened to you as a child, your, um, you know, any, any source of trauma. And that's not the kind of context that you want to be processing that. Um, so, you know, when you're microdosing, you're much more likely to, to be confronted with this sort of material outside of the container of proper support that you would want. Um, and, you know, you, you're almost guaranteed to be microdosing outside of, of the support of, of a therapist or, you know, someone who's kind of holding space for you. And that is particularly important with trauma. So um, trauma is definitely one of the, the instances in which we would say we would caution heavily, you know, if you, if that's something you're working through, and that's something you're dealing with, um, really consider whether or not a microdosing protocol is the way to go versus a macrodose. Um, and certainly if you're going to macrodose, make sure you're doing it um, properly and appropriately, um, not not stepping into that um, sort of haphazardly. Um, the second context, or the, the second way in which a macrodose might be more effective than a microdose is a problem solving dose. And this is really a dose that's typically in the range of about, um, you know, 50 to 100 micrograms of LSD, one to two grams of psilocybin. So kind of just underneath, um, you know, the, the threshold of what we typically call a macrodose. And um, with the right preparation and, and, and the right approach, uh, a problem solving dose like that can really help you have creative breakthroughs and break through um, sort of mental blocks and corners that you can't see around in, in a creative project or in your work. And um, we have a lot of really good information about this in, in, in the course and, and on the website. I can't go you know too into right now just because we're you know we're running out of time. But at a lower, somewhat lower dose than that, but but still much closer to a macro dose than a micro dose. You know, you're a lot more likely to be able to direct your attention and focus towards, you know, certain things. You're not going to completely blast off and, and you know, just sort of be a passenger on the ride. Um, and, you know, by sort of cultivating that experience and having the work that you want to focus on in front of you, having the music that you like ready, you know, all those sorts of things, um, you can really facilitate creative breakthroughs 
that you can certainly microdose increases your creative insight. Um, you know, that that's that's absolutely true. But not, you know, there's there's something to be said about having that sort of problem solving dose experience. Um, so that's another circumstance in which a larger dose might be better than, than, than just microdosing. Um, and then the last one is occasioning a missable experience. And this is, I hope, not news to anybody. Um, when you're microdosing, you are not going to have what, you know, what is known as mystical experience, right? Um, there's a lot of different sort of ways to characterize the mystical experience, but really it's that, that sense, the common denominator to it is that, that, that's, that sense that a greater power, a greater being is communicating with you, whether that's the universe, whether that's, you know, pure love, you, you know, your soul um, is communi communicating a fundamental truth to you about the nature of yourself and, 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 and the universe and, and just truth in general. Um, it defies expression. It literally cannot be put into words. Um, you know, it is, there's this term called passivity. I mean, you are literally along for the ride in the mystical experience. You are, it is outside of your control. Um, and, you know, it's really about at that point, just surrendering to whatever the, you know, the, the psychedelic wants to show you. Um, that is really, um, that's not something you're going to get from microdose. And that's something that can be very effective for people who, um, you know, are trying to work through um, sources of, of, you know, mental illness. And, and, you know, certainly some of the research has shown that the degree of what people report, um, you know, how much their experience correlates with, with how they measure mystical experience can have a direct correlation with, um, the degree of their uh, sort of recovery of uh, the cessation of their symptoms. Um, and it's not necessarily correlated with dose. That should be said. So it's not just like, hey, if I want to have a more potent mystical experience, I should take 10 grams of psilocybin versus, you know, the typical two and two and a half. There's, there's not necessarily that, that direct relationship there. Um, and this actually can often be good for people who are a little bit older. They, I think they're starting to find um, people maybe in your, your 40s or, or above probably likely to have a little bit more psychedelic experience. Um, and your sense of self can like withstand that obliteration that happened from this whole experience, um, you know, which is something that, you know, you should just expect if you're gonna step into that space. Um, but that's something that can be very effective, life change, literally life changing for people. I mean, people talk about these experiences being in the top, you know, five most influential experiences of their life. Um, that's not something that you're going to experience in a microdose. Um, so yeah, and then I think the last piece here that we'll touch on real quickly, and then we'll get to questions, um, why it might be helpful to do a higher dose first before you start a microdosing protocol. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that familiarizing yourself with psychedelics, with the psychedelic effects, can be really, really helpful um, in terms of knowing, kind of pinpointing, okay, this is what's happening. This is what the microdose is, is, is um, is bringing to me on a much more subtle level. So, you know, sometimes when people microdose, they get an increased sense of visual acuity, right? And you, you know, colors seem like just a little bit brighter and, and your eyesight seems like a little bit better. Um, with a macrodose, there's often times where, you know, you're looking at your hand or you're looking at the light coming through the, the window and, you know, your vision is just um, completely different and, you know, its capacity is expanded far beyond what you would, you would typically experience. Um, so micro, like having that experience of familiarizing yourself with what, what the effects of the psychedelics can can help you then pinpoint and understand, okay, this is this is happening on a much more subtle level, you know, with, with the microdose. Also the psychological effects too, like getting yourself, becoming familiar with that sort of destabilization and accepting that and, and opening up to it and seeing it as opportunity rather than something that's scary, um, you know, that can really help you when the microdose might start to have some of that destabilizing effect. It might start to challenge you with some of the thoughts that come up. And if you experience that in a macrodose setting, you're much more likely to be, um, have that, be able to sort of embody that intention that we talked about and that, that mindset of just accepting what, what comes up and being able to work with it. Um, and then, you know, people talk about, um, yeah, I, I mean, I was going to go into an extended metaphor there, but I don't think we have time to go into it. I think you guys get the point. If not, we can talk about it in the uh, in the Q and A. So, um, yeah, let's get some let's get some questions here, um, and and take some of your guys's uh, you know go through some of what you guys want to know. The before I go into this, um, you know, thank you for everybody for being here and um, you know sharing your your time and your evenings with with us. Um, you know, as kind of a thank you for, 
for being here and just as an opportunity for us to, you know, to try and, um, you know, expand the work and, and, and what we're doing as much as possible. Um, we're in the process of converting to a nonprofit, which Paul and I and the team are extremely excited about. We're registered in the state of Delaware um, and we're working towards a 501c3 uh, uh, designation. You know, we're starting the fundraising process process now. So that's a really exciting time for us as an organization to um, make that conversion and then really uh, be able to have the, the organizational infrastructure and the funding to facilitate our goal, which is to change the, the cultural conversation around psychedelics on a wider scale. Um, so that means conducting research, which we already have uh, a lot of that underway into the effects of microdosing, um, uh, providing more educational resources on a bigger scale, um, and really helping facilitate the growth of communities all around the world, both online and uh, you know in person, both more local psychedelic societies. So um, in the meantime, as we do that, you know, really the way that we're supported is through your guys' donations on Patreon um, or through, you know, the use of, of what we offer on the website. So we have the microdosing course. You guys are probably aware of that. You can find that, you know, on the third wave. Uh, but one of the other ways that we have really worked hard to be able to facilitate your guys' growth and, and you know, um, expansion in this, in this realm is to offer consulting calls. Um, and that's been an amazing experience for me to be able to, to work in this capacity with, um, with dozens of, of you guys there. Uh, you know, Paul started out doing them and I learned a lot from kind of watching him do it. And then, um, uh, you know, I started doing these um, with, with our community, you know, earlier this year. And it's, it's really been incredible. Um, and it's, it's honestly one of the most, it's the most meaningful part of my, of my professional life right now. So. Um, it's been a great opportunity to, to work with everybody in that regard. And, you know, really what this is about is answering your questions in a very finite sort of targeted period of time and helping you understand, okay, how can I optimize uh, my microdosing protocol? What do I need to do in order to kind of get the best, uh, the best results out of this? Um, and what we're doing today, what we're offering is that, you know, usually a call is one session for, you know, $127 for a half hour. Um, we're offering uh, two for one, right? So if you, uh, purchase a microdosing consulting call today, um, you'll get two sessions instead of one. So pretty much 50% off. And I'm very excited about this because it will give more of an opportunity to um, work with everybody over kind of a more a longer period of time and have that sort of initial um, consultation, but also be able to do more follow-up and, and kind of work with everybody, um, you know, check back in on, on progress in, in a greater degree and, and kind of move through whatever comes up um, in, in terms of challenges in that regard. So. Um, if you guys want to do that, you can, yeah, I think you can see the link on the screen, but, uh, thirdwave.co, uh, forward slash product, forward slash microdosing dash consulting dash call. I think Paul can throw the, uh, the link into the chat. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great opportunity to, to learn a lot about, <clears throat> you know, microdosing in, in a really sort of targeted way and, uh, to optimize your protocol. So, um, you know, very much looking forward to that, um, that, that offer is going to be available for the next 24 hours. So. If you guys purchase now, or if you're watching the recording, if, you know if you purchase, um, you know before, before let's see, that would be Tuesday night New York time at uh, at 8:30 p.m. Um, you know we'll we'll give you the the two for one deal there, um, and that money goes towards you know us um, continuing this conversion to a nonprofit, building out our team. Um, you know we have a really great team right now, people who are distributed around the world. They are. Um, Everybody has made sacrifices to work for the third wave and make this work. And um, I think that will continue to be the case even when we you know, convert to a nonprofit. Um, but your support in this regard is, is what funds our team and, and what keeps us going. So thank you for everybody who's done that so far. And, and I hope to be able to work with some of you guys one on one here in, in the near future. Um, all right. So enough of that. Let's go to the questions. Um, all right. So uh, let's see. We've got some. Is there a way to make that measurement of those things? Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to, you know, questions that haven't been addressed, feel free to um, to drop them in here. I'm just kind of scanning through the chat. Um, I see some of you guys are connecting. That's awesome. Um, with Mesh. <laughs> Great to have you in here, Mesh. Um, Okay, Howard, question. I'm 67. We've gone through two microdosing periods recently. Anything someone my age needs especially to consider before doing a macrodose? Uh, that's a good question, Howard. One thing is in terms of, um, you know, people who are a little bit older tend to be taking uh, medications or more likely to be taking medications. So there can be some uh, drug interactions between 
um, psychedelics and, and medications. Um, there is information on uh, Jim Fadiman's website that isn't that it speaks to um, people's the drug interactions that they've that they've reported in terms of the, the survey that the survey research that he's done. That's really more about microdosing, but it can give you a little bit of insight into um, whether or not people have had challenging uh, or you know, problematic drug interactions. Um, but that is something that you should be be aware of, um, especially if you have microdosed and been on the medication. Um, you know, be aware of how what your microdose is, and don't you know if your microdose is uh, ten micrograms, you know, don't go in and take you know three hundred micrograms of acid, right? Um, you know, try to keep it in that range, in, in the range of of ten times what your microdose is. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because some medications can potentiate the effect of the psychedelic and make it stronger. Um, so you want to make sure that you don't like dive in too, too deep into the macrodose. Um, psychedelics can also be, it can increase your heart rate. So if you have any sort of issues from a, from a cardiovascular standpoint, um, that's something to be aware of. And, and um, you know, I would definitely avoid taking stimulants or anything like that prior to the macrodose. Um, and if you do have heart condition, you know, talk to your talk to your doctor if you can. Um, you know, be better safe than sorry um, around that. But those would be the two things that would come up um, that would come up first for me. Um, so, Adam, thirty-seven year, wondering what the optimal frequency for my, of microdosing mushrooms and LSD is. Keep in mind, I may be off base and is asking this as a missed majority of the webinar. That's okay, Adam. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways you can microdose, but the basic way, what we call the Fadiman protocol is to take uh, one day on, two days off, one day on. So if you microdose on Monday, you take Tuesday and Wednesday off, microdose again on Thursday. Um, that's called the James Fadden protocol. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, okay. Um, Joe, all right. So guys, if you have more questions, drop them in, let's see. Okay, Steve, have been microdosing psilocybin. Should I pause that to do a first macrodose of LSD? Uh, yeah, Steve, I think you should. Um, and just in the same way that I talked about, the substance doesn't necessarily matter, but in terms of giving yourself a week before and a week after is a good rule of thumb. Give yourself um, you know, that space to, to both like have tolerance, watch out, and, and kind of stabilize yourself mentally before you go into the macrodose experience. Um, and then also afterwards um, to kind of look process and do some integration before you start up the microsync protocol again. So yeah, I would, I would give yourself that break. Um, uh, okay, Larry, I have good gastroesophageal reflux and that even the microdose gives me a stomach ache. Any ideas on how to mitigate that? Um, that's interesting, Larry. I think that some people have um, gastrointestinal, I've heard of that coming up with, with microdosing before, especially with, um, with psilocybin. Um, if you are, some people find that like playing with taking on a full stomach or an empty stomach can, can help with that regard. Um, I've also heard people taking it with, uh, especially with psilocybin mushrooms, ginger tea, like so have ginger tea prior to ingesting the, the dose. Um, that can help a good bit. But um, if you send us an email, we can look into look into that a little bit more. I, I don't, um, especially when it comes specifically to GERD, I don't, I don't know specifically about that. Um, I have sometimes, Anna says, I've sometimes had cramps on microdosing, not macro. Any way to avoid that? That's interesting. Um, you know, it could be a, a byproduct of, of just how hydrated you are. Sometimes people, especially when you get in that flow state and, and you're kind of losing, um, you know, you're really drawn into what you're doing, you forget to drink water, literally. So um, that, that could be a, a part of it. Um, everybody's physiology reacts differently to psychedelics. So um, I don't think I've, I don't know if I have any experience. Paul, if you know anything about, you know, cramps, um, feel free to, to drop that in there. Um, sorry, I don't have a better answer than that, Anna. Um, and certainly if it gets to be, you know, strong, I would I'd try bringing the dose down um, and seeing if that affects, um, you know, the, the severity of the cramps. Um, let's see, okay, that's your time. Um, Let's see, say what level of macrodosing for working through creative blocks. Um, Mark, that's a great question. Um, you know, I would say that the, the problem solving dose, the creative dose is typically gonna be in the range of 50 to 100 mics of, of LSD 
um, or one to two grams of psilocybin. So, you know, if the macro dose at the upper sort of beginning threshold of a macro dose is usually around 100 mics or two grams, um, you know, the problem solving dose is going to be between half that and, and up to that, depending on your tolerance. Um, and again, that gives you more of an ability to control your attention. Um, you know, you're not going to blast off. You're not, you're not going to kind of lose your ability to, to, to direct your focus. Um, but it will definitely, um, you know, facilitate parts of your brain that typically would not speak to one another to speak to one another. Uh, let's just, let's just say it that way. So, um, let's see, um, what else? Maybe some new ones coming up. Uh, <laughs> Dave, has anyone else noticed that one PLC is a wonderful tendency to make your bowel movements much more relaxed and comfortable? Um, I have actually experienced, and this might have to do with the sort of anti-inflammatory effect. Um, and, you know, we're still understanding a lot about how psychedelics affect us. Um, the, you know, the 5-H2A uh, serotonin receptor system is not only in your brain, which psychedelics, you know, affect, are not only in your brain, but also uh, primarily in your gut. So there's certainly a correlation there. I've experienced that too, Dave. I've experienced that, like, without giving away too much information here, nobody wants to know about this, but being a little bit more regular um, and, you know, just my body generally feeling better. So yeah, I've, I've experienced that, not with 1PLC, but with LSD and psilocybin. Um, okay, Patrick, you mentioned a week after microdosing, after, before integrating a microdose routine while also integrating the two week contemplation after macrodose experience. Does this have to do with both the tolerance as well as the other factors? Uh, yes, Patrick, it does. So that week after your macrodose experience has to do with avoiding tolerance buildup, but then yes, also, um, uh, you know, other factors, the psychological factors, the, the sort of letting your mind settle, that sort of integration um, aspect to it. And again, that mental revisitation process that I went into, that's something that you can start doing immediately, the day after your, uh, your macro dose. So going, setting aside 10 to 15 minutes, mentally going back to what are the insights that you gleaned? What do you want to take out of that experience? Sending those sleds down the same, you know, neural pathways down that same part of, the, of that snowy hill um, over and over. And then after about a week of doing that, integrate the microdose into your experience of doing that. So kind of layering that on top. Um, all right, maybe one more question. Um, Nancy, how do you find a therapist that will take you through an LSD macro? Um, you know, people who, this is one of the most frustrating parts about this space right now, Nancy, is that, um, you know, in our, in our view, you should be able to walk into a clinic or a setting, a professional setting, sit down with a, with a trained professional and, and have a, a macros experience that can help you work through a lot of um, what you need to work through. Uh, right now, that's that's not the case. We can certainly provide uh, the resources. If you go to MAPS, if you just in, if you just Google MAPS, um, M-A-P-S, integration, uh, psychedelic, you'll come up with um, lists of integrative therapists who will do both remote work. So if you're somewhere in not a major city, there are therapists that will do uh, integrative therapists that will work with you on a remote basis. But then also um, they have lists sort of by geography. So um, you can hopefully find a, a, a professional in your area. Those are not people who are going to sit with you and, and guide you through a, through a trip. Um, those, those are people that are going to help you work through whatever experience um, you have. And, and they specialize in integrating and working through and, and working with psychedelics, not in person. Um, but, you know, if you're having, um, if you're using psychedelics, they, they sort of specialize in, in helping you work through the material that comes up. Um, Outside of that, unfortunately, you know, the, a lot of people who do this work are, are doing it underground and they're, and they're not people who, you know, are publicly putting themselves out there. So um, I would really suggest trying to work with, with an integrative um, therapist, at least to begin with, before you delve into a macro dose. Um, okay, I think that, you know, we've answered, um, Chucky, you said um, uh, this dairy, stop or slow down a dose. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, and uh, Brian, thank you for the compliments. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you guys, everybody for being here again. Um, you know, want to, uh, you know, put the, the coaching offer back on the radar just before we, uh, before we leave, I would love to work with, with anybody, you know, on a, um, you know, on an in-person one-on-one uh, -on -one basis. It's, it's, it's really uh, an effective way to optimize your protocol and, and, you know, learn how to do this um, in, in a way that's appropriate for you. 
And then, um, you know, check out the microdosing course too. If you want something that's really in depth and you want to go through it at your own time and pace, uh, go to the website, check out the microdosing course. Paul and I and, and the rest of our team poured our, our hearts and souls into that. So uh, the two for one offer for the microdosing consulting call is, is available for the next 24 hours. So you, uh, you know, purchase one call, and you get two, uh, two free money. So, um, and then anything else? If you guys have questions, concerns about anything, please feel free to email us. Um, contact at thethirdwave.co, or you can email me directly, Charlie at thethirdwave.co. Love to talk to you guys more and answer more of your questions. Uh, thank you for being here with us this evening, and um, we're looking forward to uh, to the next one. Thanks, everybody.